excited than to be here tonight uh, with a lady I heard for the very first time live. Oh, you were a virgin. It was a Marilyn May virgin. It was an incredible <laughs> show, the marvelous Marilyn May. <laughs> This was really an incredible show tonight here at Crooners on a Sunday night, your sixth night of, uh, of the run. Well, actually, we did two, two shows last night. Wow. And we opened on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, we did uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then two shows Saturday. So this was our sixth show, yeah. And you're going on, what, 91? Uh, I, I was 91 last April. Wow. Yeah. Oh, to be 90 again. Yeah, right. Oh, to be 90 again. <laughs> that was the name of the show. We did um, every birthday. We work at, at uh, Feinstein's 54 Below in New York. And uh, I think probably this April, this past April, was our, I don't know, fifth or sixth show, uh, birthday show. And we do we do it other times of the year, but, uh, but always in April. And uh, we'll be doing it next uh, April. Um, the first time was... Uh, uh, 90 at last. Mm -hmm. That was the name of it. My lawyer names these shows. <laughs> <laughs> and and then and then it was uh, Oh to be 90 again was my 91st show which was last April. Is that he's not burning the attorney, is he? Uh, no, no, no. Well, <laughs> you know that too. He's, he's my, yeah, I do know burning the attorney. I love that. Uh, and um, in fact, one of my students do it and I love it. Um, and then in October, the show at 54 below is called um, um, uh, blame it on my youth, and it's a sad song, you know. So I have to write a happy parody to open to open the show with. And then next year, uh, we'll be back at Fifty Four Below in April, and it's called Ninety Two, and I'm not through. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a phenomenal show. Do you have any idea how many shows you've played? Isn't in your that professional funny? career? Never, never, because I've been working since I was nine years old. Wow. And really working, uh, I had a radio show of my own when I was nine. I won an amateur contest, and the prize was a 13-week radio show. And does and, and, uh, and, and, and No, no, actually that one was in Kansas. Oh, it was in Kansas. In Topeka, the capital of okay. <laughs> Kansas. And then we moved to Des Moines and um, uh, for high school. but uh, And I worked club dates, you know, all during high school, because my mother and I were alone and and we we liked uh, having the fact that I made money too yeah. she worked and I worked and and then I went on the road the minute I got out of high school I was your mother musical she was a pianist she was a pianist mm -hmm. yeah she played great she played stride nice. you know and uh, uh, could transpose on the spot wow yeah she was great so I'm sure you have, that. you have a great pianist. Who, how long have you been with him? He's uh, 13 years. Wow. Yeah, Ted Ted Firth, Theodore, Theodore Firth, Ted with two Ds is, is his name. He's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. And we, we have great fun because he just plays so beautifully behind me and, and I'm comfortable, you know, it's so wonderful. I love the Fat Swaller. Medley. Isn't that fun? That's real old. That's that was done long, long, long ago. But yeah. uh, we we just did it at um, Jazz at Lincoln Center uh, with the Wynton Marsalis band, and it was fun because uh, it was at Rose Hall, um, Jazz at Lincoln Center, you know, and and. Um, um, the, in the balcony, when I got to the part where we repeat, rose, 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 right. rose, you know, they say, take your time, take your time, and they shouted from the balcony, and then another part where I do something, I don't know what I was doing vocally, but they were saying, they're saying, you go, girl, <laughs> <laughs> in Rose Hall, and it seats 1,500 or 1,600 people, you know. So, wow. So now, when's the first stuff. time you played in New York City? Well, uh, years when I was recording with RCA in the 60s, in the 60s, okay. and we did the uh, living room. There was a wonderful club called the Living Room, and um, it was a place where you worked three weeks, seven nights a week, wow. <laughs> and sometimes two shows a night. Old know? school. So it, it was. It was a it was a, a workshop, but um, and then we did the Copacabana. Wow. And we did the El Morocco, and we worked big, big clubs. The Rainbow Grill was wow. wonderful. So we, we, yeah, we had fun in those days. Yeah. And then I went away from New York, and all the clubs, so many of them closed. You know, there was really no. It's probably place. because you moved away. No place to work. <laughs> no place to work. So then uh, I wound up in Kansas City with a brilliant pianist, whom I married, 
and we were in one club in Kansas City for eight years. Oh, nice. Yeah, we did eight, five, five nights a week, except in the summertime, then we'd go to Vegas and Tahoe and work, nice. work in, in Vegas, but uh, in Nevada. But then and then we'd, in, the, in the fall, when my daughter was going back to school, we'd go back to this club in Kansas City and, and uh, work five nights a week. <laughs> well, when you were in New York City, you, it's got to be a record. You were on the Johnny Carson Tonight Show 76 times. 76 times. I think that's time. more than Ed McMahon was on. <laughs> no, it was Ed that brought me, Ed brought me to the show. And really? Like, How was Ed. that? <laughs> it's funny you say his name right away. Um, he saw me at the living room. Really? He saw me at the, 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 one of the clubs that I mentioned in New York. He said, you've got to do the Carson. He said, you've got to do the show. And I said, yes, I certainly do. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so what was your first Skitch, time Skitch on Henderson. the Carson? Skitch Henderson. Yeah, Sketch yeah, yeah. sure. was there, and um, we did it several times with Sketch. Um, in the 60s, that again, I wish I had the date, but I right. don't. But but it's a singer's record. There are comedians that have done it. More mm -hmm. But I but it's a singer has never done it that much. Well, uh, Marilyn, when I was uh, doing some research on you, you told a great story. I think it was in John Bream who did a great article about you in the Minneapolis oh, Tribune. Oh, yeah, bless when, his heart. Yes. When you debuted uh, Thank at Cruellers here in the spring <laughs> about uh, traveling with four comedians. I think it was Shecky Green, mm -hmm. Louie Nye, Bill Dana. And who and was there? Actually, it, and Shecky, I worked with Shecky so much, I'm glad you mentioned him. I talked to him not, not oh, maybe three weeks ago. Is he still with us? He, well, he's absolutely, and just as funny and wonderful as ever. Not working, he's not yeah, working, but right. he's in Vegas, you know, he lives in Vegas. And, um, but, uh, but, the, but the traveling was with Steve Allen and Bill Dana and Louie Nye. Wow. And Paul Smith was our, was our driver. He was the pianist and the driver, the great Paul Smith. Mm -hmm. And um, it was interesting because sometimes uh, if the trip was more than two hours, working theaters. We did one-nighters, you know, in, in big theaters. And as we drove around, uh, if it was only like, I think we could, the law was that we could drive for three hours maybe. And if it was any farther than that, then we flew. Was that a union law? Uh, well, just maybe Steve's law. I don't okay. know. You know, it could have been Steve Allen's law. But but whenever we drove, it we had all those hours together. You know, mm -hmm. and they would pontificate on, on comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I wish I'd recorded it all. I well, let's see, well, Marilyn, you have such excellent timing. Thank you. Not only musically, I'm just talking. You're you're in between <laughs> stage raps. They're well, incredible. it's really thank, you're thank a you. really funny woman. <laughs> um, you know, I know that I wait for the laugh, and I know how long before I say the next words. And I'm and recently somebody asked me that. They said, "How do you know?" And I stopped and thought about it, and I said, "How do I know?" Mm -hmm. And I and I I'm conscious of the fact that I know that. And then I got to thinking because I was with Shecky. I worked with Shecky, con oh, so much in Vegas. Right. And I worked with uh, Buddy Hackett. Wow. You know. Uh, uh, what was uh, Buddy like? I heard he liked to gamble. Just oh, of course. <laughs> and so did Shecky. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Shecky. Oh dear. There's long stories about Shecky, but um, um, Buddy um, uh, was crazy. You know. Yeah. Bananas. You know. <laughs> they were wonderful. You know. They were all fun. Now, did you get a chance then um, to uh, hang out or perform at all with Frank Sinatra? I didn't, but I knew his son. Okay. I knew Junior, and uh, you know he loved watching movies, and he would rent old wonderful movies, and we sit and watch movies a lot together um was a doll he was just a doll mm -hmm. and i no, i never i never knew frank at all how did you were really the the first person to record cabaret i before was eliza minnelli how did that well come before about? the before the broadway show yeah right? before the Broadway show we did it and then and then certainly before the movie because the Broadway show was first and then the movie. Right. But um, they brought, I was recording with RCA. I did many uh, Broadway show songs before the show opened. Mm -hmm. We were getting lots of airplay. And it was, you know, they wanted the airplay and the publicity. So the show would bring their, their theme song, or the, you know, their main tune of the show to me to record. Actually, to my NR man. 
And so we did uh, step to the rear and let a winner lead the way, which was from How Now Dow Jones. And Tommy Toon was in the chorus. Really? Uh, of, of, during that time. And Tommy comes to see me now. He's a doll. And uh, he always says, we were always so glad when we'd hear, we were in rehearsal for the show. And, and we would hear and you singing Step to the Rear on the Air, and we'd say, there, there's our song, you know. <laughs> so it was interesting, many years ago, that I'm, many years after, that I, that I meet Tommy. Over the years, you know, you, you've had a really arduous working schedule. It's, it's good, I keep moving. <laughs> yeah, now, now, have you over the years, like when you were living in New York, did you have enough time to go and see other artists that you Well, enjoyed? I live there now. It, it, oh, okay. I, I really never lived there then. I've lived, okay. I moved okay. there the past few years. And, what, um, what part of Manhattan? And it, uh, broad, Broadway, in the, right in the middle. I, I, I walk a block to 54 below. Oh, nice. <laughs> so that makes great. it easy, right? It makes it really nice. I just have to. How many songs? <laughs> not not that you have to, you would have to recite them and play them if I requested. But how many songs do you think you know? I have no idea. Take a gander. Uh, well, you, you know, you just. Uh, it's funny because when something is played, all of a sudden you start singing the lyrics and you don't even know you know that. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and then there's so many more I want to learn. We get wonderful people here at Crooners, and they they are. Uh, uh, very hip audience. Yeah, you know. well, you had. I, I was talking to a gentleman um, while we were waiting to uh, tape tonight who is from Lake Okoboji, and yes. he had about three tables of yes. your fans from down there. How long yeah. have you been playing down there? We did uh, 63 years ago. They turned the inn, which was built in the in the late 80s. Right. I mean, you know, the century before. 1880s. Our, 1880s. And um, now it opened. Um, well, 63 years ago, the new inn, and they hired us to open the, the room and play the whole summer. So we would play it and, and party a lot, and I bought a boat up there that I called. Oh, really? I called my ski, it was just a ski boat, and I called it the May Day. You know, <laughs> May, nice. Hawaii Day, because me with a boat is a disaster. <laughs> and, uh, and then the next boat that I bought was the Mayflower, the M-A-Y-E dash Sure, flower. yeah, I love it. And, uh, so it's a party place. It's well, a party you know, it's place. It's incredible because um, uh, you need to have a reason to go to Iowa, right? Oh, cool. uh, well, it, it, that's, a, that's the best kept secret in the world. Well, that's, what, that's so exactly gorgeous. what I was going to say because yeah. you're driving and it's like cornfields, cows, oh, cornfields, corn, corn, and then there's this beautiful lake. Oh, it's beautiful. They say come over to the cottage and it's a multi, it's several million dollar house, you know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's an oasis. Lake. It's, it's just beautiful. We did, um, uh, now we do the Lakes Art Center. There's a beautiful theater there that yeah. you, um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's wonderful. Um, and um, the people are loyal. I, I really, because of the 61 years, on our 61st year, um, Mo Rocca came up there to do our CBS Sunday morning show. And uh, unknowing, we none of us knew that that, that was going to happen, that they were going to tear right. it all down. But it was, uh, I got a lovely note from the woman that bought the property, and um, she said, because I, I had said in an interview that I had a lot of notes in those walls, you no, know, <laughs> when they tore them down. And she said, well, I hope you'll make lemonade out of lemons, you know, she said, I know it must be traumatic for you, and she said, so it was a lovely way to, to uh, let me know that she understood my trauma about it. Well, you know, I was thinking tonight that um, you, this is your, they added an, you had five nights here at Crooners, mm -hmm. right? And they added another mm -hmm. one because mm -hmm. the sales are so incredible, as well they should be. But the only band I can think that's ever done that is the Grateful Dead, and I can't even remember them oh. playing more than five <laughs> nights in a row. <laughs> well, that's because they don't want to. <laughs> yeah. And then, the, but, but the cool thing is, is there's a parallel. I mean, they were the, you know, greatest tippy rock band of all time. But what kept them alive for years was their steady fans. They call them deadheads, which I don't know. But to see almost 20, 21 people come up from Lake Okoboji, which is right. a four or five hour drive, well, they, well, they that's, that. that's right. love. We had people that were here earlier. I mean, that had, they saw us Tuesday night, or they saw us Wednesday night, and then somebody else saw us Thursday night, and they came back. So that's really lovely when they, when they repeat. I was so uh, blessed this summer, three months ago, I saw Tony Bennett, 
who just turned 93 at the right. Orpheum Theater downtown, right. who was right. phenomenal. Right. And uh, his version of Fly Me to the Moon without a microphone gets me every time. Right. And then to see you, I think somebody's got to put together a Tony Bennett, Marilyn May oh, CD. No. Well, he, you know, he likes... Uh, Lady Gaga. Uh, yeah, Lady Gaga. He, um, he chose Lady Gaga, and it was a smart thing because she has a lot of young fans. Right. And she'll bring all of her fans, you know. So who, over the years, if you would pick your say three to five favorite musicians doesn't have to be singers well uh, harry but harry harry's a great singer okay Harry's a great i did his show when you know he just had a show called harry right. for a, a, what about a year i think it was about mm -hmm. a year and um we did his show and then as um, several months later he was in kansas city and he got me up on stage and we we sang he's he's so good that would be one um, you know to choose Today's singers, I don't, I don't know them. <laughs> right. Well, you would let, let's go back a little bit because um, uh, when I was doing some research on you, I, I don't know if there's any greater compliment than Ella Fitzgerald calling Marilyn May the greatest white female singer of our time. Well, she was asked on on several television shows, and she always repeated it. They asked her, uh, "Who do you listen to?" And she said, well, Sassy, you know. She would say, well, I listen to Sassy and Sarah Vaughan, of course. And I listen to Carmen, Carmen McRae. And so those are two black, blatant, right. fabulous singers that I love, too. And then and then Marilyn May, we became very good friends. We had a lot of dressing room talk, you know. She's just, she was shy. She was a very shy lady. Mm. And very, um, very kind of unto herself, you know. She didn't do much of a meet and greet with people. Uh, and I take that back because I have seen her sit at a table and they stand in line, you know, um, for her, but not often. Uh, but boy, we had a lot of fun. But Ella and Mel, Mel Torme, and Mel and I, I knew Mel very the well. The velvet fly. I said to him, please, you know, write me a chart, you know. Because cause I, I do my my own arrangements, the, mm -hmm. the structure, of, you know, the the way we do them. And then in the orchestrations I always want, you know. And so I said, you've got to write a chart for me. And he said, Marilyn, I don't have time to do my own charts. He said, I have so many charts to do. Right. But he, he is, uh, I guess, Mel and Ella are about my favorites of all. Hmm. I, you've, this is your sixth night in a row. You did a couple of shows a night uh, early in the week. I'm going to let you go. I want to tell you how much I was moved by Thank the show you. tonight. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you came. I'm celebrating my 40th anniversary in town, so I'm into this professional music thing for about four decades. Anniversary of, of your my career? My very first gig in Minneapolis. Oh, God. Only which, 40 what, years. It was in a place <laughs> called the Skyway Lounge. I opened up for the strippers. Oh, good heavens, of course. <laughs> so, But to see somebody that is so artful, so healthy, thank you, thank you. so beautiful, and so thriving at your age. It, it's a total inspiration. Well, and we have to keep moving. That's what I tell the audience. And, and thank heaven we get a lot of young people in our audiences now. So, But the older people, I always say, you know, you got to keep moving. They say, how do you do it? I say, well, I don't take meds. I take vitamins, you know. And so we have friends that say, I want to know the vitamins. And I said, I don't know what they are. My assistant kind of hands them out to me, and she might be slowly killing me off. <laughs> <laughs> Did she, is, she, is she in your well? <laughs> Check into yeah, that. Yes, she is, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Get a second opinion on the meds there. Right. <laughs> Marilyn, this was so wonderful. I wanted, to, I wanted to tell you what uh, was so moving about it. Number one, just to hear you. I have two, uh, w one more question, but to hear you for the first time, live, because mm -hmm. I checked out the stuff on, on YouTube. Oh, God, there's so much stuff it haunts yeah. you. <laughs> um, but you made time, like all great art, you made time disappear. Well, thank you. I, thank I felt you. like I... We did an hour and a half. We did, we did an hour 35 tonight. I didn't realize it. was it. so incredible. There was so such a good audience. I need to ask you, as a, I write songs myself, what was the song about the ballroom or what? Fifty percent, yeah. Who wrote that? Well, um, it's from an old show called Ballroom, and um, uh, Marilyn and Alan Bergman 
wrote the lyric, and Billy Goldenberg. And Billy was in my, well, actually, at, 50, at Feinstein's 54 Below in New York, they had a, a they, once in a while they do nights of, of a whole Broadway show, and they have various singers that do each song, you know. And so they invited me to close the show with 50%, the, the whole show of Ballroom. And Billy was there, and so Billy said, during rehearsal, he said, now don't leave the stage. I'm, when I get up, I want to, I want to talk to you. And um, so, you know, but it was all these singers, you know. And so I did my thing, and I thought, I can't stay on stage. And, and he didn't invite other singers right. to stay on stage. I'm not doing that. So I got off, and he came on to do, he sang a little song, um, I Wish You a Waltz, is from the same show. And, um, and Precious, he's now, I think he's in his 80s, and he's tiny, he's a tiny little man, and he's just adorable. And um, so he sang his song, and he said, okay, where's Marilyn? And he looked around the stage, and I, I wasn't, you know, I was down in the audience. And he said, get back up here. And um, so I did, you know, and I kind of stood behind him, because it was his moment. And he said, um, nobody's ever sung a song like that, that song like that. Uh, 50 percent. He said, nobody's ever sung it like that. And he, and he looked to the audience and said, you know, nobody's ever sung it. And he said, you know, no, but her, <laughs> nobody's ever sung it like that. And finally I said, well, was it good or was it bad? <laughs> <laughs> so we became immediate friends. <laughs> that, it's so fun yeah. to hear a Great well, song I love, for the I love, first time. I love songs with great lyrics like that, and then and they, you know, they Marilyn and Alan are the some of the best that ever, ever, you know. The, so when they write it, it's the uh, the other song we did of theirs tonight was um, um, uh, "Make Me Rainbows." That's, That's theirs. beautiful. Isn't that cute? Have you ever tried to write a song yourself? I write parodies. I'm good at parodies. Okay. I do a lot of parodies. Uh, now I just use their melodies and write fun words myself. What? Uh, when's the last time you recorded a, a record? Um, not too long ago. I have two in the can that we don't have time that I've, I've got to get in and mix. How can people? That I've are got watching? to get in and, and and finish them before I die. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a long way to well, go. You got is, time. One is very interesting, and it probably would be even more interesting. Well, tell us days, a little bit about it. Because it's all about Harry Truman. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So it would be interesting, and with all the stuff that's going on these days, maybe something positive a in, yeah. a, in the political field. A real patriot, <laughs> by the way. Yes. And the buck did stop there. Yes, that's right. Marilyn, just uh, for the people out there in the Wall of Power TV audience, be they young musicians or people getting on in life, what could you give them in a uh, brief synopsis of how to live your life, how to... That's what I say, keep moving. Yeah. Just keep moving. Keep doing something. Don't retire. That's Don't retire. You don't have time to retire. I was going to say, too, you have so many great stories and you have uh, this wide um, fan base that it's all different ages. Have you thought about doing your memoirs? Oh, somebody said, yes, I've, I've asked that many times, and I always say, who would buy it? I'd give it to everybody, you know. And so <laughs> the marvelous Marilyn May, you have a story to tell. When you write it, I'll buy it. I wish I could remember. There's great stories, and when I get with people that we've lived, then, then the stories come back. But you'd have to, I'd have to travel a lot with a lot of other people, you know, yeah. and meet and say, okay, because uh, last night uh, a gang came up from Okaboja, and we reminisced funny things, you right. know, we told funny things, but, but you can't just sit down and remember, you know. I have to ask you one more. I could ask you questions all night long, <laughs> sure. but you have to go. You got to get I back to New York City. I love the fact that you thought of the book, the book stuff. So <laughs> I love it that you thought of that. Did you ever know Anita O'Day? I did. I did know Anita. Uh, met her in London. She was a spark plug, uh, wasn't oh, she? Oh, she was fabulous. She was just bananas and wonderful, and me yeah. too. You know, I'm crazy, and she is too. Uh, she was incredible talent. Incredible. I heard, an, I heard an interview with her on Terry Gross was several years ago and about how she went, you know, it was the gangsters, it was the heroin, and then mm -hmm. she, to kick heroin, she went to wine. She said, when I, when I 
started to sweat, I jumped in the ocean. And when I got mm -hmm. cold, I sat in the sun. Yeah. And she kicked it all yeah, and yeah. came out really yeah. on top. Yeah. I'm, I don't have any of those stories of, of I survived husbands. Yeah. <laughs> I, survived, I, do, I survived three husbands, but I just never, never got into any kind of substance at all. You know, they were all talented. Um, and my daughter's husband, my daughter's father, um, was a dancer, an, an incredible dancer. And we owned a dance studio for nine years of my life. I dealt with the mothers, and he taught, and I taught the singing in the, in the studio, and and he taught. He was an incredible dancer, and just you know drank like crazy. Yeah. And then then I met this genius pianist, and um, you know of course I'm going to fall in love with him. He played sure. he played all the right chords and invented the best chords, you know, <laughs> and we did a lot of key changes and he was there. And uh, so that was a, because of that wonderful, you know, his fingers, uh, but it became unbearable mm -hmm. in, in, in otherwise, you know. But uh, he's, he's on a lot of the Tonight shows hmm. uh, in the beginning and he's on my first three albums. We have seven albums on RCA, but he was on the first three. And so the wonderful pianos, that, figures that you hear are Sam Tucker's, you know. So now how can people track down the records that, that you own the rights to that you can sell and if they want to book you for really my website my okay. website and then every now and then uh, in clubs if some you know big album will show up for me to is that, sign is that marylandmay.com uh it's uh, marylandmay.com yeah yeah m-a-y-e -E. marylandmay thank you so much thank for your you, time sweetheart. it's such thank a beautiful you. show you. i gotta hear you i gotta come and hear you <laughs> I will send you one of my CDs. I didn't bring it, but I brought you my book. Thank you. Thank you very much. Blue Guitar Highway. I have, uh, I'm so proud. There's two big, there's Publishers Weekly and Kirkus Review. Did, how did you take, have the time to get this together? <laughs> I got, they gave me $6,000 and I took off five months. Mm -hmm. I didn't play any gigs, and I would start at nine in the morning, and I'd write till midnight oh, every wow. day for seven days a week. I don't know if I could do it today. I don't think I could do it by myself. You know? But my I mean, uh, because I just the stories. And you just remembered the stories. You did it early enough. How old are you? Sixty-three. Well, see, you're I'm probably when I was sixty, I could have done it. I don't know. No, you could you actually if you found a co-writer. I think you could do it. But you found a co-writer? No. No, no, I did it all myself. I'm but sorry. Marilyn, so when is your next big gig in New York? Um, uh, well, uh, the 17th of October. Okay. We do um, eight days at, 50, at Einstein's 54 Below. And then, uh, and then in November we'll be in Palm Springs. Okay. And where else are we in November? The University of Central Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, really? We, we were there wow. several years ago, and they've invited us back. If Beck put me in touch with who's ever booking the room out there, I have <clears throat> two really good friends. In this Palm guy, Springs? No, in uh, New York. Oh. And the guy named Jerry Fishman, they considered uh -huh. him the um, Frank Sinatra of the Garment District oh, God. Oh, in the right. 50s, oh, 60s, and he was actually good friends with Johnny Carson when Johnny got started. Oh, my Johnny. He's a big shot. He lives yeah. in a big penthouse. But they they treated me like gold, and they were also uh, really good friends with Les Paul. Yes, I'm, so, I'm, I met Les for a minute. I play a room that he that he's he was famous in uh, called the Iridium. Yep, I was there and, to see him yeah, there. I, I play it once. Did you ever play two. Fat Tuesdays before? I then? don't do that. We do we did the Metropolitan many 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 times and it closed. And then we did the but now we do the Iridium and we do Jazz at Lincoln Center. We do Dizzy's. That'll be in February. And then uh, we're at Birdland. We do Birdland, we right. Birdland Theater. We do that New Year's Eve and five more nights, and uh, two shows New Year's Eve and five more nights. And and I I didn't agree with it because it's the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. You know, and I said I don't know if they're going to come to New Year's Eve because New Year's Eve is going to be a lot more expensive right. than, than the next five nights. You know, but everybody just says, oh no, they'll celebrate New Year's Eve. Thanks for watching Wall of Power TV, live from Crooners with the great, marvelous Wall of Power. Marilyn May. What a name. She'll be back in April of 2020. Lovely. In the meantime, go to MarilynMay.com. Thanks, doll. Thank you, sweetheart. You're Thank amazing. you. I loved it.